Today we'll dive into two of the most important processes happening inside every cell, diffusion and osmosis. These processes are how cells move substances in and out, and they play a huge role in keeping the cell functioning properly. By using some practical examples, we'll make it easier to understand how diffusion and osmosis work in real life. First up is diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of particles from an area where they are more concentrated to an area where they are less concentrated. Think of it like when you spray air freshener in one corner of a room. At first, the smell is strong in that corner because the air freshener particles are packed together. But over time, those particles spread out until the scent is evenly distributed across the room. That's diffusion in action. Particles naturally move from where there's a lot of them to where there's fewer. In a cell, diffusion helps move things like oxygen and carbon dioxide. For example, after you breathe in, there's more oxygen in your lungs than there is inside your cells. Oxygen diffuses from the high concentration in your blood, near the lungs, into your cells where it's needed. At the same time, the waste product, carbon dioxide, is building up inside your cells because it's produced during energy use or metabolism. Since there's more carbon dioxide inside the cell than outside, carbon dioxide diffuses out of the cell into the bloodstream, where it's carried back to the lungs to be exhaled. Here's a practical example. Imagine you're at a crowded concert. You're in a small area packed with people, high concentration. When the concert ends, people will naturally spread out towards the exits, low concentration, as they leave. Similarly, in cells, particles like oxygen and carbon dioxide spread out from areas where they're crowded to areas where there's more space. Now let's look at osmosis, which is a special type of diffusion, but it only involves water. Osmosis is the movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane, like the cell membrane, from an area of low solute concentration, where there's less stuff dissolved in the water, to an area of high solute concentration, where there's more stuff dissolved. The goal is to balance the concentrations on both sides of the membrane. Here's a practical example of osmosis. Let's say you have a raisin, which is shriveled up because it's lost a lot of water. If you put that raisin in a glass of water, what happens? Over time, water moves into the raisin, causing it to swell up. That's because the concentration of water outside the raisin is higher than inside. So the water moves through the raisin's skin, the semi-permeable membrane, to even things out. In a cell, osmosis controls the movement of water to keep everything balanced. For example, imagine a red blood cell. If you put it in pure water, where the water concentration is high and the solute concentration is low, water will move into the cell through osmosis. This can cause the cell to swell up and even burst because too much water is entering. But if you place that same red blood cell in a salty solution, where the water concentration is low and the solute concentration is high, water will move out of the cell and the cell will shrivel up, just like that raisin. The balance of water inside and outside the cell is crucial for keeping cells healthy and functioning. Now that we understand how diffusion and osmosis work, let's talk about why they're so important for cells. Diffusion allows cells to get the oxygen they need to survive and get rid of waste products like carbon dioxide. It also helps nutrients like glucose diffuse into the cell so the cell can produce energy. Osmosis is how cells manage water levels. If cells take in too much water, they'll burst. And if they lose too much water, they'll shrink and stop functioning. Ever wondered why you're supposed to water plants regularly? Here's where osmosis comes in. Plants need water to stay upright and healthy. When you water the soil around a plant, the water concentration in the soil is higher than the concentration inside the plant's roots. Through osmosis, water moves into the plant's root cells, filling them up and making the plant stand firm. If you forget to water the plant, there's less water in the soil and the water inside the plant cells will start to leave through osmosis. The result, the plant wilts because it's losing water faster than it's taking it in. Remember when we talked about oxygen and carbon dioxide? Every time you breathe in, oxygen molecules diffuse from the air in your lungs into your bloodstream. Then, as your blood circulates, oxygen diffuses into your body's cells where it's needed for energy production. At the same time, 
Carbon dioxide, which is produced as waste, diffuses out of your cells into your bloodstream and is carried back to your lungs to be exhaled. This constant gas exchange is happening because of diffusion. Both diffusion and osmosis are essential for cells to survive. Diffusion helps move gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of the cell, keeping the cell running efficiently. Osmosis controls the movement of water, which is crucial for maintaining the right balance of water inside and outside the cell. To put it simply, diffusion is like spreading out from a crowded space to a less crowded one, like people leaving a concert. Osmosis is the special case where water moves to balance out concentrations, like a raisin swelling up in water. Whether it's keeping plants hydrated, exchanging gases when we breathe, or making sure cells don't burst or shrivel up, diffusion and osmosis are constantly at work to maintain balance inside our bodies and the natural world.